Our Hebrew lesson for this morning comes to us from the first five verses of Scripture found in the book of Genesis. Listen now to God's word. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good and separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of our God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we are reminded as we begin this epiphany season that you desire to reveal yourself to us. Through word, through water, through bread, through your word that took on flesh and dwelt among us, you come to us to share your love. Attune our senses to your presence with us now. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation on all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A contemporary commentator pointed out a reflection on this year's lectionary. She noted that in recent decades, um, scholars have translated the opening words of Genesis, uh, moving away from the more familiar lines we just heard that say, in the beginning, God created. Rather, scholarly thought has coalesced around this translation, when God began to create. Now, she points out that many of the newer translations of Scripture open with these words instead. And so I invite you now to hear our text as it comes to us from the new revised standard version, the updated edition, that was released in 2021. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Now, those of us who gather in these pews know that this passage from Genesis is not a scientific text, but a theological one. It is written part poetry, part prose, inviting us into the mystery of God's own mind and heart. As a tradition that values reform that is ever reforming, as a tradition that engages scripture through its own translation into our vernacular, there is a lot that this updated translation of familiar words has to offer us. It invites us to sit with a familiar text with a spirit of wonder and ask what new insights might this translation of an ancient text have to offer us today? Now, don't get me wrong, there is a beauty to knowing that the opening words of Scripture say, in the beginning, God created. But the updated translation makes it so much more clear that God's creativity was not relegated to a particular moment in history, whether we perceive that moment to be a, a seven-day period or an extended engagement that aligns with our understanding of science. 
when God began to create, is evocative. It reminds us that we gather to worship a God who is still active in the world today, not just a God from way back then, a God <clears throat> that creates not only then, but now. Our lectionary passages for today on the first Sunday of this epiphany season, known as the baptism of Jesus, put before us two texts in which our God is creating something new. Now in both of these very different passages, there is water and a lot of it. And there is chaos too and a lot of it. There is the chaos of unformed matter in the first and the chaos of sin in the world in another. And in both passages, the voice of God, the word of God, and the breath of God collaborate on a new initiative that will bring about new life, not just for some, but for all. And so we gather today at the beginning of a new year, and we do some things along with many others who share our Christian faith. We get back to the origins of our faith, to pause in this ever-moving forward trajectory of life with to-do lists and stop and recall when it was that God began a new thing. When God began to create, a life-giving current was initiated, a current through which maple trees and pelicans and squirrels and humanity came to be. And we know as we gather here today that God continues what God began. And then when God with us stepped into the waters of the Jordan River to be baptized, another life-giving current was initiated through which God stood with us in our sin to cleanse us from sin and offer us a new life on earth and eternal life in heaven. God continues what God began. On this baptism of Jesus Sunday, we remember that our own origins are held in the heart and mind of God. The life we are given and the new life we are offered are gifts of a God who claims us as beloved to likely knowing our names even before they slipped through our parents' lips. It is this love that we are promised as we gather around the font and the table, as we remember the waters of creation and the waters of our own baptism. God is a God of promise. But God does not promise that there will not be chaos. God does not promise even that we will never again sin. But God does promise to be, love us and be with us always. God continues what God began. Many years ago, my father gave my sisters and I a set of DVDs for Christmas, and he entitled them The Story of Us. In a dozen volumes, my father transferred all of our home movies and VHS tapes onto a DVD with background music and menus you could click on <clears throat> that would take you to various eras of the first few decades of our life together. Volume one, scene one, you click on the menu and there is a very tiny and very bald me about to be baptized. <clears throat> I was born on December 1st and as one who grew up in a Roman Catholic home, I am sure my baptism took place on a Sunday afternoon in January. My aunt dressed me in my baptismal gown we saw on this video. The walls in my room were yellow. We found this dress last summer when cleaning out my father's attic while we were preparing his home for sale. Four generations of my family gathered that day, the video tells us, 
They met at our house, and then they all walked out the front door of our home while my father took a movie of everybody heading to their cars. And then they gathered in the first few pews on the left hand of the Catholic Church in which I grew up, the same church in which I eulogized my father a year and a half ago. As I watch the video, I see that so many of those who gather around me that day, who stood and promised to love me, to nurture me in faith, and to teach me to follow God in Christ, have now passed from this life and are resting now in the arms of God. They, then and now and always, were swept up in a story of a God who had claimed me even before my baptism and certainly before I myself could utter any words. Now I can tell stories of each of these people as if they were in the next room. My own son loves Grandma Tani. She, he never met her. She passed away in 2005 and he wasn't born until 17. But Grandma Tani's love is so vibrant in my life that my son knows her and loves her and says the same Slovak phrases she would say to us, because God continues what God began. Sixteen years and one day ago, I was ordained to ministry um, in the PCUSA and called to be the associate pastor here at ELPC. It was a Sunday that was both Epiphany and the baptism of Jesus in one. My father toasted me with words of scripture at dinner where my family gathered on the eve of my ordination. He affirmed my belovedness by my parents and by my God. And my Catholic family gathered the next day in these front pews right here as I made the promises asked of me to answer Christ's call to be a pastor. Now, Grandma Tani had passed away by then, but she told me once as a young adult when I stopped receiving communion in the Roman Catholic Church that she'd have to disown me if she didn't know me so well because it was against everything she knew that her own flesh and blood would no longer be Catholic anymore. But when I began seminary, she and my pap toured the campus with me and came here often to worship and didn't miss a beat in saying that, oh, well, of course, if God is calling you to be a pastor, you can't be Catholic anymore. Who are we to stand in the way of God? <clears throat> they were a force to be reckoned with, so if anyone would have tried, it would have been Grandma and Papa Tani. Never, let's be clear. But God is God, and God continues what God began. Our passages for today remind us that our stories bear the marks of God's initiative and God's eternal love. We circle back today to greet Christ at the font and the table, and we recall through the words of our scriptures that God began a new thing so that we can cling to the truth offered to us in God's word, that God begins a new thing in us and begins yet again. Siblings, what has God begun in your life? What is God continuing upon you and through you and through us even today. The God who began to create form out of the chaos of the primordial waters continues to create anew, even out of the chaos of a world that is at war, a world in which we still battle COVID, the disease, and COVID, the shared trauma, as we as a human family have navigated the loss and fear that has come with a global pandemic. God is a God who creates anew, even through the chaos of our individual lives, through the busyness, the difficulties, the worries, the fears, because God is a God who continues what God began. 
The God who in Christ stepped into the waters of the Jordan, claiming our baptism for the forgiveness of sin as his own, is with us still in the waters of our most recent sin, in the waters that carry away the sins of those who have caused us harm. God is with us in solidarity, in hope, in encouragement, in community, in love. Because God continues in us what God has already began. This first Sunday of the new year offers us a gift as we go back to the beginning so that we can orient ourselves to the mystery and promises of the triune God who began to create and continues to create today. We orient ourselves to a God whose promise to be with us is so sincere that not only did God take on human flesh as a baby, but stepped into the waters of repentance with sinners. From this vantage point, we are reminded that this triune God who was with us is with us still and will accompany us every day because God continues what God began. With the turn of a calendar and the start of the new year, our gaze shifts forward. As we embrace what is new and what will become and what it is to which we will be called, may we not lose sight of the origins of our faith and all that has already begun in God. May we step forward with the faith enough to trust the God who preceded the beginning, a God in whose loving grasp we are held, a God who speaks peace into chaos and mercy into sin. And when we grow weary or distracted or have spent too much time doom scrolling on our phones too close to bed, may we pause and take a breath and receive the gift that is promised to us in these texts, a gift that is promised to us in God, a gift that allows us to find hope in our faith. For friends, we worship and celebrate and serve a God who continues what God began. Praise be to God for this and all other marks of God's faithfulness. May it be so. Amen.